Good morning. Good morning. Are we matching today? Yes. How about that? <laughs> oh, I didn't get the memo. <laughs> <laughs> you would have gotten the memo if you had been on a Zoom call from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. yesterday. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Oh, and at council the night before. All right, you can't see mine. Good morning, everybody. But at least it's purplish. So you're <laughs> much morning. better. Should well, I go I mean, back and change? I'm still at home. <laughs> <laughs> I gave myself a 10-minute window to find the link and get on on time this time. But uh, it was pretty easy. Cool. Good. I keep having my kid calling me when there's like a last minute, like the counselor said, you don't have your classes for, for the next, I want to call it the next year because they've squashed all the classes in real tight. Like the first semester ends Wednesday and then the oh, wow. semester ends January and then they start a whole nother set of semesters and she doesn't have all her classes for next year. And uh, she calls me and she goes, well, what do I do? I, I don't have the Zoom link to meet with the counselor. And I go, well, then email him. Like, well, how else do you get in touch with them? Well, you know, it's so funny that email and sometimes telephone, it's like some people don't even think about those things. It's like, yeah. give me a break. Yeah. Well, she's, I'm she's losing she's my the, voice here. The coaches do group me and the coaches do like all these group text things to them for all the sports and stuff. She'll be mm. like, oh, the coach texted, we're meeting at this time, or oh, you know, and it, it's all on their phones. It's crazy. Yeah, there, there's, it's so funny about communication, so many ways to communicate, mm -hmm. ways, but are we really communicating, <laughs> you know? Are we really with all the, And I'm so frustrated with my email, I have Outlook at the chamber, two different email addresses, a general chamber info and one Rebecca at Go Webster. And within each of those, there's focused, there's other, and there's junk. And I have to check all three because they send the good stuff to junk all the time. I'm like, oh, I'm furious. Well, and I'll tell you, it's probably not just Outlook because my Hotmail takes uh, emails from teachers and coaches and puts them in junk. Oh. Yeah, that's where I find so out. What's the point of having a junk? I'd rather just have it all in the e inbox. Yeah, then you can just go through it yourself. Yeah, and you do, You know, I, I look back. Oh my God, it was terrible. But I have to make sure I do that. Yeah. I spend more time moving things from junk into the proper folder. <laughs> yes, it's not junk. Yes. I think it took me half of the softball season. I had to keep <laughs> the email from the coach and moving it. Oh boy. All right, we got two of you. Okay, focused. I'm back to focus. Brian, is there anyone who wasn't coming? I forgot to look. No, everybody's supposed to be here today. Awesome. Morning. Morning. Good morning. 
I'm trying to find the, uh, the agenda. I have a draft. Did, I, did you guys not send the agenda out, or am I just missing it? No, I see it. Let me print it real quick. Where Where is it? Help me out, and I'll get it. I want to get mine, too. I You want me to forward it to you? It was on email Wednesday at 927. Wednesday at 927. Okay. I think I can I'll find it. I'll forward it to you real quick, too. Okay. City of Webster Groves. Yeah, we have a quorum. It always looks like I don't know why I, I can't find it in my email. How's everyone doing? Good, I think so far. Yeah, yeah, so far so good. Yeah. You guys got a bunch of soccer games this weekend? Um we there's one one of for each kid this weekend. No we've been having the six year olds had two Saturday and Sunday for the last several weeks. And I, I think I think I think my six year olds playing more games than my nine year old is. We're thinking the same thing because we've got one on Saturday, one on Sunday with him. And that's been like every weekend. I don't know if they're trying to get them all in before it gets cold and they're gonna stop their season earlier or what but i think so soccer doesn't start or stop earlier because of the cold i know but they cyc started late this year you know <laughs> they didn't start until uh like end of august beginning of september so it's just weird that my six-year-old's got more games than my nine-year-old yeah they're trying to right. it. it goes all the way till november 20th mid-november so mid yeah yeah, it's late. Let's see. Well, if you have a, if you've got a six-year-old, you have a six-year-old. We might be playing. We might be playing each other. That'd be a big rivalry game between you and. I a huge rivalry game. I'm surprised we haven't played each other because. I feel like my nine-year-old's team's played Mary Queen of Peace like seven times so far. Um, yeah, we just keep playing like they're two different teams almost every game. Um, but yeah, we haven't, we haven't played the, we have the six-year-olds. Have we'll have to place a wager, do some tailgating. Oh, I think for sure. <laughs> It'll be interesting. So it, the six-year-olds are uh, are funny to watch. <laughs> Uh, it's getting for it's uh it's it's challenging to watch. You just keep waiting for that one moment where someone breaks out of the pack. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I was just say if they can get out of the while. pack, sure. So, oh, I just saw Pam join. Um, Hi, Fran. Are we waiting on anybody else? Hey, Pam. How are you? Tim and Jennifer. Okay. We'll give them a couple minutes. Did anybody go to the Walktober over the weekend at all? I did. I did. I saw was there for Rebecca there. Fran was there with her little green Bavarian hat. I did, I did have an Alpine hat on. Alpine. Complete with an authentic, real gums bark. <laughs> uh, the restaurants were packed. And actually, some of the sidewalks really had lots of people on it. Uh, uh, Straps yeah, looked thing. like it was very busy, and uh, we had to wait. My sister and I had lunch at Layla. We had to wait for like fifteen, well, half an hour to get a table. Good to see, yeah. And we had to wait Not to get crazy. into Leopard because of um, <clears throat> occupancy limits. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah, I know Sarah ran up there to get some something of sorts at Leopard, um, and she she said yeah, it was crowded, and the restaurants looked looked like they were all doing well and crowded, and you know she was basically saying the same thing that we were going to go back, but we couldn't nail down a babysitter on short notice. Yeah, so. I wanted to go back <laughs> on Sunday, but didn't. Yeah. Didn't, do it. it didn't happen. Yeah. 
Sorry, I found the other two. They're off in attendees. Hold on, I'm bringing them over. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I see them there. Hmm. I can tell them I'm sorry. I'm looking at my agenda and writing notes. <laughs> uh, no big deal. Well, we have everybody at the cell. It's good to see you all. We haven't had everybody in, in a little while, so it's, this is awesome. But um, I um, let's go ahead and call the meeting to order. Uh, did everybody get a chance to, re to review last month's minutes? Do we have a motion to approve the minutes? I motion to approve the minutes. Thanks, Jen. Second. Wait a second. Thanks, Tim. All in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I know we have some people muted, so. All right, all good. My camera is not working. I apologize for that. It's okay. We know what you look like. Yes. <laughs> um, we don't have any visitors, right? As far as on, on visitor comments at all? No visitors. That's what I was just saying. I'm looking at everybody on the on here and I don't see any. Um, I want to hop right into the old business. I know we had a lot going on um, the last month or so with the video project and then holiday time. And I know, you know, we all had the subcommittees that were meeting. And so, um, Jennifer, you want to talk about the video project update, just where we're at on it? Yeah, um, we actually got a second team added. I guess one of the teams in the class was not hearing back from who they were initially assigned to. And uh, the team that we've been working with said, well, hey, we've got a lot of businesses we could do videos on, so why don't you join that one? So there's now two teams. Um, the one, the first one that we spoke to is doing dining and the second, the new team is doing style. So they've reached out to all the boutiques. They had some trouble getting in touch with Leopard, but I believe that they've, they've been in touch now and they're starting interviews. Um, I know that uh, Fran had emailed and suggested like, hey, with the October, this is a great time for them to get some video of a lot of people walk around in retail. So I believe that Kayla, the the producer that we spoke to, got video that both teams could use. So uh, that was the last I heard of them, but they're they're chugging along. So I expect that before Thanksgiving, we'll be able to see a draft video. That's what I was going to ask was what the time frame was on draft. So awesome. Do you want to let them know when our, when our next meeting is? Just to try – I mean, that should be pretty close. Well, do – I guess our next that that'll be fine because our next meeting is not at the end of November. It'll be at the end at the beginning of December because of Thanksgiving. So yeah, so if they're targeting um, Thanksgiving or end of November, we should be good. So okay, I'll let them know. Good deal. Um, what's, the, what's the approval process once these videos are shot by the students? What happens next, and do we get a review of it? Do the business owners get a review of it? <clears throat> I mean, I think we're kind of learning as we go. So I was definitely going to have the subcommittee be a first pass on that to take a look and, and okay. just give like a first view. And then I was thinking we would take it to this group. I um, Because December group. 3rd is getting very close to the end of the mm -hmm. semester. So if you're going to make any edits or changes. They would have to be done quick, which I think yeah, that have to be done once everything is kind of initially done just from knowing at work when we work with the videos that once once they have the draft being done, if it's just small tweaking, they can get that done pretty quick. Okay, okay. Yeah, I don't know that they'll get, um, it could get dicey. My thought is if, if they have to get approval from all the businesses, you know, if you figure there's like five restaurants and if, you know, unless it's like a factual error, I would, I would hate for one restaurant to be like, well, I looked at it and we got 23 seconds, but this other one got 32 and I just feel like, you oh, know. Oh, right, right. Get into it. Yeah, That's I agree good. with that. I, I don't know that we have time to send it out to all of them. I mean, I assume that they got authorization from the businesses to, to yeah, film and shoot they, um, and to do it. They've spoken to all the owners for them. So, and that's how they're setting up the interviews. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good deal. Yeah, I think for the sake of of time and hope i mean i i have no doubt that they'll do a good job with it but i think if we just yeah if we keep it in our group and then roll it out i think that would be the best thing that way we can you know we can start um getting these out before the holidays 
Good deal. Does anybody else have any any questions at all on the on the video project update? Just that I would insert one thing, and that's either Mara or I should look at it just to make sure that there is not that there would be, but just to make sure that there's not any complicating factor since we're going to put it on the city's website and on the city's. No, Facebook. I agree, and that's what I was even thinking. Like when I this group, I definitely include you guys. In that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> when when we speak of this group, that it, you all are included in it as well. <laughs> Um, um, good deal. Well, that's exciting. Um, Joanne, do you want to talk about the holiday planning and where we're where we're at on everything? I know we met yes. on that last week. So we just met last Friday and had a great meeting. Um, all of the funding that we had in the budget is the same as from last year. We talked about changes and there will there are um, potentially are two changes one is going to be a change and that is switching from ktvi to kmov channel four to do our holiday ads this year kmov is slightly less expensive but that wasn't the primary reason and they also will do a great day st louis um facetime and i haven't gotten that all figured out yet, but I think it would be uh, potentially the mayor with some business owners to do that FaceTime slot, but I'm not certain yet since we're still in October with that. But um, we talked in our committee about the opportunity to provide it to KMOV uh, this year, even though we had used KTVI the past few years, because we wanted to reach a different segment of the market. I know that in the past we had talked about, well, there are more people within a particular age group that listen to KTVI, but there's also a separate sector that listen to KMOV. And so we wanted to reach out to them this time to see if we um, could drum up more business for Webster Growers businesses by doing that. We will be working with Creative Entourage as we have in the past to do the 30, 30 second ad for KMOV. And I've already talked to Jennifer about taking care of that um, for us at Creative Entourage. So she will be working with me and also with KMOV in order to get that in place. And the other item that we've been talking about and we've tabled it until our November committee meeting is the holiday calendar. It was a fabulous um, addition last year. The problem is that we're not sure how many activities we're really going to have this for the holidays this year because of COVID. So we've just decided we're gonna hold on. We're not going to get rid of it yet. We'd love to at least have something and maybe even an opportunity where I can have um, for the activities that we do have, I could have our GIS staff member do like a little map and put it on the website of those activities in addition to what we would do with Fran on the um, holiday calendar that we would do in paper form. Joanne, do you have the holiday calendar just like one, do you have one in front of you that you can kind of hold up or just show uh -huh. to the group as far as, sorry, I didn't mean to catch you off guard. It would be easy to screen share it, but. If you give um, me a second, I'll share the screen. Yeah, let's do that. Um, Cause I know we have a few new members, that, you know, between last year and this year that probably don't know what it looks like or, you know, what's on it. So this is one of the pages. Can you see it? Yeah. And then this is um, all of the activities that we had last year. And then this is the others. Oh, no, it's not. I'm going to the wrong page. So this was one side and this was the other side. Sorry, it, fold, it was folded a trifold and I was getting myself confused on the number of pages. Is this yeah. a direct mail piece, um, Joan, or just to have available at spots? So um, I'm gonna let Fran talk about that because she and I both distributed them. We did not mail them last year, but she can talk about where all we distributed if you don't okay. mind, Fran. Sure. Um, everybody that's listed in this calendar got a supply. We gave out a supplies to um, have available at City Hall, at the Rec Center, at a couple of big distribution points like Strops, for example. Um, some of the businesses um, got more, they ran out and we went and gave them back. Um, even did some at Webster University, um, just high traffic areas. We did not mail them to anyone. 
But Thank yeah, you. we were everywhere I went, I had them with me and uh, people just asked for more. So I just kept giving them out. You know, yeah, and and like you, you guys can see as far as what's screen shared now, um, just a lot of the events were, you know, were concrete date and time events that may still happen, but we're not sure that we figured we'd, we'd try and buy a little bit more time before we make the call on that. Because we are, we're doing a good job with the holiday planning as far as um, starting early relative to what we have the last couple of years. Um, so we've got a little time to see just how how cases develop and what um, what's going on, you know, around the holidays as far as these events before we have to figure out if we, you know, if it makes sense to put it in print. It's just occurred to me, I have no idea how Santa visits will work this year. Like I'm seeing that on there and I'm like, I mean, my kids are too old for it, but it, I just, I don't know, no mall Santas this year, I'm guessing. We're gonna have Santa on Zoom? No, actually I <laughs> I've seen some images of how they think they're going to do it. Um, they would put, you know, the at the botanical garden, there was that bubble that you could walk into and, and look like you were in a snow globe. They've had pictures where they put Santa in the snow globe and the kid stands outside the plastic bubble. The so kid stands like outside in the bubble movie outside? with John Travolta. Yes. So the kid stands outside of the plastic bubble that Santa would sit inside. So your your Santa sits there, you know, enclosed mm -hmm. instead okay. of the opposite. And I've also seen ones where they just have a big plastic in front of the sleigh, and the kids would stand in front of the sleigh, and Santa's behind the plastic piece. I've seen like three images. Oh, that's that's good. Uh, that sounds better. Yeah. But yeah, they're, but the bubble looks like a snow globe. So it's like Santa sitting in a snow globe and your, your kid is standing in front of the snow globe. Yeah, I could see that working like at a botanical garden or something like that, but. Yeah. That's gonna be a little different, that's for awesome. sure. <laughs> so, so yeah, we'll, we'll talk about, I guess we'll have another um, holiday planning I guess I would assume committee meeting, don't you think, Joanne, between like at some point next month, since our next full meeting is December 3rd, and we'll uh, figure yes. out the details on that. And also, I want to be able to update everyone on what um, the rec the parks department's going to, to do regarding decorations, because I've talked to Scott Davis and Yvonne about opportunities to have particular locations where um, it's a little bit different than last year to try to provide the safety, but yet provide opportunities for particular spots. And maybe we could even, again, include our um, include this on the website as far as where the spots are, where you could take your pictures. What, my thought would be that if we could get individuals, our residents to participate in this, we could then do like a random drawing. If every, you know, if, if people went to all 10 locations or however many locations it was and submitted their pictures, then we'd put them in a random drawing and um, for like $50 in city gift certificates or something like that. We're always looking for more pictures and it would be nice because, you know, um, Jennifer, from, Jennifer from Creative Entourage always tells us that it's so much better when you have pictures of people instead of just random pictures of things. And so this would be one more opportunity to get more pictures and it wouldn't cost that much and you'd get a lot more, I think, uh, participation from our residents. Good deal. Yeah, I, I think that'll be neat. And it'll be something fun that, you know, that we can do that's low risk that, um, you know, hopefully we'll get a lot of participation on, so. It would be nice to come up with some sort of hashtag for all of the pictures. And then, I don't know, like one of the kind of political yard signs you could put in front of it or, you know, hashtag whatever. So that if you search that on a social media site, you can find all of them and pull them quickly. We currently don't have an Instagram account, but we were talking about the possibility of doing that. I mean, you wouldn't even need an Instagram account if you just had that hashtag whatever like hashtag holiday and webster that way you could go on instagram and anyone who used that hashtag you could pull all of those pictures at once 
Um, so that would be an easy way instead of having people have to, you know, take the picture, email it to webster.org or whatever it is. I think that's going to be a lot more kind of a customer friendly way to do it. That sounds good. Could we also, that's a great idea. could we use them on the city's website at some point? I didn't hear you. What did you say? Could we use them on the city's website at one point? Yes, that's the intention. Use it on the website and the Facebook page. Okay. Can you pull it from Instagram and save it and then, you know, put it on another another medium? Is that something? I, I don't use Instagram very much. I so I don't know if you can do that or not. Do that. No. Um, but what you can do and what I see a lot of like, like if somebody has a Pottery Barn thing in their house and they take a picture and they tag Pottery Barn in it, a lot of times like the business will reach out and be like, do you care if we reshare this? Um, and the person will just say yes or no. Um, I don't know if you can move that picture to another place. Uh, and I don't think mm -hmm. the quality is going to be good. But yeah. um, there is a way a lot of websites can just like... Well, that's probably too much. I think that if if we have it on Facebook, that's probably going to be our best solution. Okay. All right, that's all I have. Thank you. Thanks. Good deal. And then moving into our, our new business, um, outside social media, I didn't see anybody here from Creative Entourage. Are we doing that or... Uh, Who's handling that? Are you handling that, Fran? Yeah, this or, is um, something Mara wanted to put, put on there. Yeah, this, this, this is something that came up recently. So for those that are following different things on Facebook, um, a few months back when a lot of things happened with COVID, people have created different types of Facebook pages like the one that has the hashtag 314 um, business one where you can where people post and ask about where to find things locally and then lots of people share all their all their stuff um we now have another one that's a shop 63119 um, that a resident pulled together and it's supposed to be for businesses to share you know things that they have going on or for people to be looking for local businesses um, and i just wanted to throw this out there because we're getting to a point where because it's so easy for people to create a page on Facebook or to create an Instagram account or whatever, it's starting to get a little bit too scattered. Um, so it, it's a little difficult for businesses to keep up. It's difficult for us to like help to monitor if we want to help. Um, so, you know, I like I joined the 314 together business page. Um, and if I see something, you know, randomly as I'm at home and I'm scrolling and I see that someone says, um, I'm looking for a business that caters box lunches. You know, I'll go on and post, oh, Art of Entertaining, they have box lunches. Um, and I think people are doing that, but it is getting really scattered. So um, I just wanted to make you all aware <laughs> when the shop 63119 uh, was posted, the resident who put it together reached out to me and through Explore Webster Groves and said, oh, can you send this out to the businesses? And so we did, I, I shared it um, through our, again, our Facebook page that's private for the business owners. But at a certain point, we've got to decide, I think as a group, like what are we, what are we supporting or what are we just saying, hey, it's on its own, it's doing its own thing. Um, because you could get into a rub of, you know, I, I know there's a lot of little, home startup businesses due to the fact that we've been shut down. And I, I, I'm i not researching them, but I will tell you, I'm sure about a dozen of them that are now posting that they have home businesses, have no business license, aren't paying taxes on, you know, what they've done. You know, they're, they're just, they're, it's getting a little rogue out there. Um, and so um, I just wanted to kind of throw that out there. Um, again, don't want to discourage anything but I also want to make sure we're not being lumped into, I mean, I, I know some of you know, there's like five different community Webster Groves pages out there. Um, and it, the same thing is starting to happen with ways to support businesses. 
So if anyone has any thoughts of like <laughs> what you'd like to do, whether you, you know, want to particularly support one or the other or just let them do their thing. And if it helps businesses, that's awesome. Um, any thoughts? I feel like from watching everything that's happened with the community boards, like any attempt at control that we try to exercise on these groups would be futile. futile. Yeah, like it's just like you, and even now, like the other week, I had to take them off my, you know, cause it's like, there's a fight that started brewing in the alternative community, which usually was like, you know, the alternative alt is picking, you know, and it's just like that starts happening with shopping businesses. I think it would drive us crazy to try to maintain any kind of control over that. That's my thought. I agree with Jennifer. I mean, I think it's probably smart of us to kind of keep an eye on things, but as far as, you know, endorsing one over the other, I think we get into trouble. And overall, I mean, if people are trying to support Webster businesses, I think that's great and we should let them do it. Yeah, I think so too. I don't know that I want to be in the middle of it though, by any means either. I think as long as we're keeping an eye on it and there's nothing, you know, crazy bad run and rampant, then, you know, we just stay away. Awesome. That's all I wanted to do, sort of make you aware. Mm -hmm. If you want to keep an eye on it or if you want to join it and support it, I think it, it's, you know, I'm, I'm, it's great that various residents are taking this on, that they have time to do that. Um, and we'll just keep moving along. Mara, which ones are there, just so that we know? I mean, you said shop 63119. Uh, what, are the, what are the other ones that you kind of keep an eye on that you know about? Right now, I've only been keeping an eye on the one that's the hashtag 314 together. Um, because that came on pretty early on and has been pretty, I think is, is pretty well set up. Um, the shop 63119 is the only new one that came on. There'd been a few other things in between with people just posting and saying, hey, here's a, a Google spreadsheet I've created and you can tell us if you're open or not open. And then there were a couple other people who were doing some other off the wall kind of things that weren't necessarily social media but were shared on social mm -hmm. media. I, I haven't followed any others. These were the only two that I've been really just making sure to kind of keep an eye on, um, especially if, if there is a way to promote one of our businesses and, and tying into it. You know, if I see that someone's asking about something that it is very specifically a business here, I'll, I'll go ahead and post a, a link to their, to their page. Okay, good deal. Um, do you want to go through the business district updates? Yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. Um, so the Old Orchard Business District, I think I've given you an update before that they have, uh, it's like three quarters of a million dollars um, coming in federal funding for their streetscape. Um, mm -hmm. We finally got all the approvals from uh, St. Louis County and MoDOT and all of our check boxes were done. We went out to bid. And the bids have actually come in under our estimates, which is awesome. Um, we are gonna wait and not do the streetscape construction till spring. Um, just didn't make sense for multiple reasons to do it this fall. Um, so that'll be starting in spring, but you will have seen um, the Missouri American Water did move their line out of the sidewalk. Um, and then they've just kind of patched it and it's not the best patching um, but that's what's going to have to last until the spring when the sidewalks get completely torn up again. They've also been moving the utility poles um, and moving those. And that takes a while because each utility has to move their lines and they do it in an order. So like charter starts and then um, AT&T can move their lines and then Ameren can move the pole or whatever. They have an order that they do it. So you'll see a little bit of that happening. Um, on the north side of the street, it goes from um, just past Murdoch and it'll go all the way down to the novel neighbor. Um, so that's the whole streetscape that they have working on. Um, Crossroads has been trying really, really hard to get the same funding that uh, Old Orchard was able to get. They've applied for it twice and been denied twice. 
Um, so then they've been trying to work with St. Louis County because Big Bend is not our road. Um, so we don't get to just do whatever we want. We can't do anything with the sidewalks. We can't improve anything without county's approval. Um, so we'd gone back to them with a real basic, basic plan that we had some funding for um, already set aside by the council and um, county came back with a nope, you can't do anything. I mean, they literally said you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this. So we've kind of pushed back and um, we've got the ear of someone at St. Louis County. He's going to try to pull something together so we can talk a little bit more. Um, that area, because of where the walkability of it and the safety of it, um, especially with the sixth grade moving down to Hickson, there's going to be a few hundred more kids going to school down there and a lot more walkers. Um, and we've, we've focused on that when we were trying to get the funding from uh, the federal level and we just couldn't seem to, to get that, that win. Um, so they're working on that and that's their focus right now, um, more so than just about anything else. Um, Old Webster has been focused on events, um, rightfully so. Um, the Walktober that had already happened, um, they're working on their uh, winter walk. Um, and then I know Joanne had already talked a little bit about how the, um, uh, the, the holiday decorations by the Parks Department. Just so you know, um, some people were trying to figure out why our banners that still had 4th of July were up. It's because we had a beautiful new fall design. We were finally gonna have a new set of banners. And for some reason there was a hiccup and they misprinted them at, the, at Zane Williams and they had to reprint them. So they're finally being delivered this week, which is already too late. So on November 1st, um, the winter banners are gonna go up. We went from 4th of July to winter banners, which is kind of like 2020. Um, <laughs> the winter banners are going up. Um, Old Webster did um, pay for this year brand new ribbons to go up at the tops of all of their poles. Um, they also put in their budget um, garland to go down the light poles. Um, those were added to their budget this year. Um, so those should be going up um, and a part of the, um, the decorations for the season. So that kind of gives the business district updates. Any, any chance we can get those before the, uh, the holiday walk? So November 1 is when they're putting up the bows and the banners. I believe they are also putting up the garland, but I have to confirm with parks. Oh, that'd be great, okay. Yeah, definitely bows will be up. At, we're gonna try to have Public Works do bows at the exact same time they're putting up the banners. Um, and uh, I put, I'm putting the work order in for that today because I just found out that the bows should be arriving in time. Great. Yep, super okay. exciting. Um, I can just go straight into city update if that's okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. What's the date of the winter walk? Uh, just real quick. Uh, Fran, is it the 14th, 15th? This is the 14th and the 15th, I believe. Yeah. It's a Saturday yeah. and Sunday. November. Of November. Let me verify that. Yeah, 14th and 15th. All right, I'm going to go okay. into some city updates. Um, so I'm going to start first with the with the fun business news. Um, so Union Studio opened up yesterday, I believe, in Old Orchard. Um, the annex um, next to Frisco Bar Room hasn't had an official opening, but they've got kind of the soft opening going where you can, I think, still go in and get some things, but they will be firmly open quite soon. Um, Dharma and Dwell should be opening up very, very soon, I think in the next week or two at the most. Um, so all of those are in Old Orchard. Um, and then the newest one that I can kind of share with you because they've turned some things in. So the, uh, many of you know that the, um, the car dealership, um, the Subaru dealership is moving out of Webster Groves. They have both the dealership property that's on the south side of the street. They have property on the north side of the street, which is a lot and a small uh, two-story brick building. And then they have a used car lot, which is down off of Laclede Station and Big Bend. The Laclede Station and Big Bend um, has applied for a preliminary review at Architecture Review Board, as well as variances before the Board of Adjustment for a brand new urgent care center um, mm -hmm. that they're gonna put on the corner. 
Um, so we've got an urgent care center going in that particular location. Um, I have, um, and I can't share with you yet, but I have a pretty exciting, if it goes through new business going into the brick building with the parking lot next to it. Um, if this one comes, it's going to be super, super cool. Um, but I can't share with that one yet because they have not formally submitted, but they've been talking with me and asking lots of questions. Um, if it's axe throwing, can you blink twice? <laughs> I really need to work on the axe throwing for you. <laughs> I drove nice. by an axe throwing in, I think, Manchester and thought right of you, Jen, right away. And then next to an that urgent would care would be a perfect, yeah, like yeah, perfect, perfect joy. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, that urgent care is going to be so close to my house. I wonder if they'll have, they have like a um, you know punch card or something like that that uh, that we could utilize. I feel like kids will be there like every other week. So <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've got the, let's see the, those those um, the city council approved on Tuesday night um, an amendment to the ordinance for the Regents Bank site. So the Regents Bank um, was is two lots. Um, there's the lot with the regions that's been built already in Old Webster. Next to it is a building that was going to hold two different tenant spaces. Um, they would like to put a coffee shop in the front of that building, and then there's going to be an office user in the back. Um, they had to get a, an additional approval because their ordinance did not cover coffee shops. The building has already been approved by Architecture Review Board. They just need to amend the interior plans for the, the footprint of the front half of the building, um, but they should be able to start quite quickly once they get those final amendments in with us. Um, we also have permits in the Gymboree location had closed uh, during due to COVID. Um, we have a permit in right now. They're actually moving since that tenant space is open as well as another tenant space. They're doing some improvements. Um, they were supposed to turn in and I haven't seen it yet and it was supposed to come in this week. So I know it was coming coming in. Um, it's a retail jewelry, um, a jeweler, I believe going into part of the space and then they don't have a tenant for the other larger space, um, but they are doing work in that location for, for new tenants. Um, we also have a couple more, again, can't share yet, but I've got a couple more really cool. Um, I mean, we are not, I know lots of other places have people closing due to COVID. We're getting a lot of people saying, hey, I, I have a little more time to think and I wanna open another location of my business or I really wanna to move to Webster Groves. I even have this one uh, email that I've got to answer, which I, I, I'm not sure how to laugh in an email. Um, I had someone asking me where they can find four to eight acres to develop in Webster Groves. And I'm so, <laughs> really, <laughs> are you kidding me? Um, so anyway, it, it's been kind of, the, the emails that are coming in are kind of humorous right now. Um, so that's all of our new businesses. In addition to that, um, we have a couple things before the city council and a couple things before the plan commission that are all code amendments that we're working on. Um, we have the parking code before the city council um, that's moving forward. We also have um, two different residential code amendments we're working on before the plan commission. One of them is just related to the overall regulations of how large houses can be, um, how much they can take up on a site. Um, and we're, we're trying to look at that because we did make amendment a couple of years ago and we're still seeing the developers building the absolute maximum that they can build. Um, and we're getting a lot of concern from residents. So we have that one open. We also are doing a multi-family or two-family code amendment. Um, the code right now in our A4 residential district says you can do two-family structures if a certain percentage of the structures on that block are already two-family, which essentially means that you can't have two-family structures in anywhere but like three blocks in Webster Groves. Um, and so we're looking at an amendment that would allow um, on lots that are at least the minimum size, um, the potential to put two family, which could be either attached like a pair of townhouses um, or two family one, you know, on top of the other um, that would still be the same sort of volumetric space that you would see for like a single family house. So instead of having one 2600 square foot house that a developer builds, 
they could potentially build two 1300 square foot townhouses, um, which kind of continue to provide the, the mix and diversity of housing types um, that we are starting to lose here as, as houses are being demolished. Um, so both of those are before the Planning Commission. They're going to be taking a while before them. We're going to kind of pull apart the ordinance and try to see where we can um, address some of those issues and, and try to address some of the concerns. Um, we did have um, approved before the City Council on Tuesday night an amendment to our political signs. Um, it, there wasn't clarification that on public property, which would include the uh, rec center and the library, that they technically weren't allowed to put signs on the day of the election. Um, so we cleaned that up and that was approved so that they can go legally or, you know, on election day only um, at those two polling places. Um, we also opened the hearing and had the first and second reading of an amendment to a planned commercial district or a rezoning to a planned commercial um, Pacific place in Old Orchard, um, which has been there since the 1980s. They also have a little bit of mixed use with Gorilla Street Food, the, the hair salon, uh, the art gallery. That's all owned together along with um, also Big Sky Cafe. Um, and they wanted to make some minor amendments and the old ordinances that they'd had over decades um, wouldn't allow them to do some, some minor changes. So we talked with him about updating his whole thing, also thinking ahead to the future. Um, so his ordinance also includes the possibility of maybe doing an expanding a few more of those residential uh, senior housing, um, potentially above the one story retail building. Um, and then also opening up his ordinance to include maybe a mix of other tenants that if one of those tenants leaves, um, he'd have some flexibility of what commercial tenants could go back in. Um, so that one uh, had its hearing and its first and second reading on Tuesday night. Um, I think those are all those updates. Um, I think we reminded you last time, but I'll remind you again, the SG Collaborative Project is on the city's website um, with an update of links. If you weren't able to go to the town halls, please go and look at the um, the meetings and the information and um, please know that there are still a whole series of steps to the process as it moves forward and we will continue to update the website with that information so that people can get involved. Did I forget anything Joanne or Laura that we The only thing I would add is the political yard signs. Um, for the first time, we're gonna have political yard sign recycling. So if you have those, uh, please hang on to them and we'll provide a place for you to put them and more instructions will come later through the city website and communications. And I guess the other thing I would add is that we are continuing to move forward the city manager search. And I am optimistic that we will have, in depending on the length of their contract, um, with where they are now, I hope we'll have somebody in place by the end of the year. Uh, I have Laura, a do you have any updates? Oh, sorry, go ahead. I have a you question ahead, uh, for either um, either of you on the SG collaborative thing. Are there um, studies or information I can access to share with my chamber members about the economic impact? Um, yeah. so that they can be more knowledgeable about what we hope to achieve economic, in terms of economic growth for the community that I can use as uh, talking points. Not yet, Rebecca. Um, the city council did uh, hire someone at the last council meeting, development strategies, to provide those documents. And okay. once we have them, they will be made available. Okay, good. Good, because I would like to see our chamber take a position on this, but I kind of need some ammunition uh, to make the case that this is good for the economy and good for the tax base, you know, that kind of thing. You'll get that chance uh, when we have more information um, because they're, in addition to what our uh, newly hired consultant will bring us. We expect to receive some more information from the studies that SG Collaborative is doing, housing, parking, environmental impact. Those, we don't right. have those yet either. 
So I, Mara suggested it. I will just emphasize this point. We are early in this process. We've got a ways to go and lots more information to collect. Uh, and, you know, we are committed to providing that to the broader community. So I think you'll have eventually everything you want to know to take a position. Okay. Uh, just it's, not a like way, I'm, yeah. it's not like I'm twiddling my thumbs with no, <laughs> no other projects right. to do. But, uh, you know, I was thinking, you know, if you have population growth, you're going to have economic growth. And we don't have, you know, what, what, what was it that phone call or email was they wanted to develop four acres, you know, right. so we just don't have the land uh, to do it anywhere in uh, the city. So I would like to get behind it, but I guess I'm saying I'd like some ammunition to make a justification. Or if you guys know of somebody that we should invite to a chamber board meeting, uh, at some point in time, when it's important, who could speak to this, that would be great. I just want you both to know I'm very interested in that. Thank you, that's great. Um, I my question was gonna, was also regarding SG Collaborative for you, Laura. Um, just any any basic updates on it? I was gonna say not as specific as as what Rebecca was, was asking, but just between last month and this month. I know they had the town hall, but I wasn't able to make it on that, so. No, it really, we're, we're at a point where we've shifted from, you know, I will say this, they did a very good job. We asked for lots of public engagement before they came with any conceptual ideas to the city. And they did a very good job of over the summer, even under pretty restrained circumstances, trying to engage in that, that public process. But what we've done now really is we're at a point where we have to hand this over to the city processes. And, you know, Mar is working, Mar could be working on SG Collaborative, which seems like almost full time in addition to everything else she's doing, because we have to go through the plan commission and we may have to um, do some changes to ordinances and things like that. And so really we're sort of shifting focus from this is what SG Collaborative is presenting to this is now we as a city have to work out what works for our community. And so that's, that's going to take a while. So it's, it's probably, you know, four to six months in process. Is that a fair estimate of timeline, Mara and Joanne? Yeah, I'd say more like five to seven, but four to six. Yeah. That's very aggressive. Well, when, when you say five to seven, at what point will the process be at at the end of that time period, five to seven. They would what, need what to will, go, where will we be? They would need to go through a rezoning with the city um, for okay. the property, which would include um, an ordinance that would establish how many units can they have, how much parking do they need, what improvements are we requiring them to do to streets, um, what do they need to do in terms of um, green space or connecting to um, parks and trail systems. All of that gets lined out in a site specific ordinance that is just for their property, which is similar to, I like to give the example because we don't have a lot of these in Webster Groves, but the Novus building um, yes. and all of that property, it had a site specific ordinance that said you can be this tall and you can have this much square footage. And on the first floor, here's the uses you can have. And on the second floor, this is what you do. And you have to build a parking garage. And once the parking garage is built, you have to give it to the city. So all of those pieces were in that site specific ordinance. Okay, okay, got it. In, in addition to that, we'll have to have all the funding mechanisms um, defined. That includes working with the school district if there's gonna be an, any impact. And I expect that they will ask for tax increment financing. And so that has to involve the school district in the planning as well. So in addition to figuring out the site and what goes there, you have to figure out the financing component as well. Good deal. That's good to know. So I um, have uh, one question. Um, I mean, it seems amazing and like, frankly, kind of shocking all of the movement that we have in Webster Groves when you drive through other communities and you see so much shut down. Is this the norm? I mean, like, or are we kind of the outlier here? We're the outlier. I mean, this is like a really good story to pitch to the post if someone would want to uh, talk about it because it's frankly just very oppressive. I, I was in a discussion the other night at Webster University about abundance and scarcity and community. 
and we were talking about, okay, if you think about your community, what's abundant and what's scarce, uh, your resources. And the top of mind for me was what's abundant in this community is private investment in our community. There's, you know, it, people want to be here and people want to invest even in the middle of a pandemic, which I think is really, really cool. Yeah, and I mean, just tangentially, it seems like the real estate market for housing um, is following that same trend in Webster too. I mean, even, I know that nationally that, or at least in St. Louis, it's still pretty hot, but I mean, it's definitely that in Webster as well. I so I would just also uh, caution, cause I do think that this is absolutely true uh, but let's not forget that there are a whole bunch of people in our community who are facing challenges. So, for example, the Webster Rock Hill Ministries Food Pantry is still serving people every single day. Um, and so I think it's also a little bit of, uh, of a illustration of there are a lot of people doing really well, but there are still some people even in our community who are, are having challenges as well. And so many of our businesses are on the razor's edge. You know, they're surviving. They're surviving, right. but many of them are like, are we going to survive through March? I mean, really, I can feel it in their voices when I talk to them, how, how much tension there is. Yeah, the restaurants are extremely worried with the cold weather not being able to do the patio dining. Very worried. Yeah, I've talked to a lot of them. They have a lot of uncertainty going into winter. But what Rebecca said, I hear it all the time. They're just... The businesses are trying to survive to the other side. Yeah. And they've got January breathing down their neck, which is normally, you know, well, nothing happens in January. Right. What we should be doing perhaps is figuring out a way to help them in January. I don't know what that is, but man, that's going to be tough. You know, um, speaking of restaurants, um, I've noticed that all through the summer and, and into the fall, the West End has opened up streets. Um, I think for weekends, I'm not sure how many days a week it is, maybe two, where they set up the tables in the street. I wondered if anyone had come up with that, maybe under a heated tent or something that would somehow mimic and expand what's been going on on the sidewalks this summer. So I'll, I'll tell you, that's come up over and over and over again. We do not have the kind of grid system um, and the ability for closing down our streets. Um, there are certain communities you just can't do that. You can't route traffic around. You've got the, the railroad tracks too. It would actually hurt some of the businesses versus help them. Um, so it's really not smart necessarily. And then the whole issue of these heated tents, there's this whole conversation of, are you really just creating another indoor space? Um, you're, you're, uh, Mark, yeah. Mark Hinkle calls it a COVID box. <laughs> Yeah, you're just creating another box or a space. And I think most of the businesses, when they call me, they're talking through their best options for continuing to go back to a pickup only. How can they have, you know, in the evenings, uh, areas that are dedicated to, to pick up and people taking food home. Um, so I think that's become a little bit more of the focus um, because really putting up a tent doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, because all you're going to have to do, you're going to have to provide heat, which is potentially a fire problem. And then you're going to have to put walls up and, and those walls are just creating another indoor space, essentially. Did Lou Ellen's talk to you at all about what they did with the street there? Well, they've been doing it without asking. Okay. So no, um, <laughs> we haven't gotten any complaints. Um, but if we did get a complaint or someone got hurt, it would kind of, blow back on them. Um, you know, we've, we've been doing a, a, if we don't get a complaint, if it's still meeting ADA accessibility, we're, we're not, we're not, you know, saying anything, um, but at a certain point, we're going to have to go back to some of the basics after we get, get through all this. Um, but yeah, there's there's some there's some safety issues if you do not have a more permanent barrier. Um, a car could come swinging around and, and hit stuff in the parking spaces and other things like that. <laughs> I you know I, I have some concerns, but again, I haven't gotten any complaints. We haven't had any accidents. I'm. I I always have these concerns with this this whole street thing. I mean, with John and Leopard and his 
uh, wife and family that were hit on the uh, in Maplewood, um, you know, just on the regular sidewalk and now people playing rogue onto the street. I don't know. It It's concerning to me. Yeah. Yep, agreed. Um, well, next meeting, so we're, we're not meeting in November because of Thanksgiving. Um, but, you know, I think we'll have um, subcommittee meetings with the video project, with the holiday planning um, in November. When we come back to December, we'll pretty much be ready to go on those. So I think we should keep those on old business. Um, I do like on new business for the next meeting agenda, um, like a 2021 planning um, of sorts, I, you know, kind of what you were talking about, Rebecca, with um, maybe figuring out what we can do to help, um, especially in January and, you know, February, the tough months for, for our businesses anyway, um, maybe talking about that and talking about what our goals are for 2021. Uh, does anybody else have anything that they'd like to add to the agenda or that they think we should talk about the next meeting? We can add things to it too. So um, does I anybody a, know? I have a couple of announcements when it's appropriate, uh, Mark. Go ahead. Mike. No, go ahead. Oh, okay. I was just gonna say uh, the chamber is doing Santa's on the loose. Um, currently, we're doing just three things. We're doing a 5K live run. We're doing a virtual 5K run and a live one mile walk. We have dropped the little kids elves on the the kids 100 yard dash. That has been dropped uh, for safety. However, when, um, so it's gonna be uh, Saturday, December 5th, uh, if, our, if uh, the uh, COVID gods uh, approve it. But um, our major sponsor, SSM Health, and some of our committee are worried, want to do something for kids. So it has to be virtual, or maybe they could get a, if anyone has any ideas, uh, please reach out to me on how we can involve kids, not in a live event, but on some sort of virtual thing. Maybe they do a dash on their own and they get a elves on the loose face mask or I, I don't know what it could be but if you got any ideas along that I would appreciate it um, secondly I thought we should announce that this Saturday is a make a difference day and um, that is the city of uh, Webster Groves as well as Shrewsbury Shrewsbury's doing a honeysuckle project in Werner Prop Park uh, Blackburn Park, I'm hoping to help the, I'm going to be there with the Rotary Club to help plant trees in the bird sanctuary. I'm so excited about that. But there's a lot of ways to drop off stuff that people need. You can drop off uh, boxes of fabric. You can drop off food for a food pantry. And there's more things you can drop off. So I just think it's a great thing. You can get rid of some of the things you don't need anymore and um, make a difference. That's it. Good deal. All right. Well, does everybody uh, or does anybody know that December 3rd doesn't work for them? No, it's not our usual meeting date. So you guys want to look at calendars real quick? Should be fine with me. Good with me. Okay. Good deal. Okay. <clears throat> Well, I don't have anything else. If we want to go ahead and adjourn, and um, if I don't talk to some of y'all before Thanksgiving, have a happy Thanksgiving and have fun, be safe, and uh, and yeah, you guys have a good one. Okay. You too, Mike. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Take care, all.